What's going on, everyone? Austin Hargit here, aka Dr. Welds, and I'm with my good friend, Guy. What's up, guys? He's from the Great White North up there in Canada. I'm from Houston, Texas, and today we're going to show you a little difference between the AWS and the CWB standard. All right, so Guy, you're going to have to walk me through a little bit of the process here of this fit up because it is different than the 3G that I'm used to here with the AWS D11 standard. So tell me what you got here. Well, so we got two plates, two three eighths of an inch plate thick. Um, these are usually about three inches wide and six inches long. And we've got a backing bar here that's usually about two inches. We went with, uh, we've got a one inch strap right now. This is what we're using. Yeah, that's what we got in the shop. So maybe the worry and, and the fact that we're here in the States, uh, this is kind of like the typical uh, coupon setup for us. We have that one inch bar, the three eighths plates, usually about eight inches compared to the, your six, right? So a little bit of difference is there, but as far as the joint design, tell me about that. So joint design, design because we're doing the vertical, We've got a half inch root opening. If we were doing the horizontal, that is the only one that's different. The horizontal has a 5 16 root opening. The flat, the vertical, and the overhead position have a half inch. Now, again, we've got quarter inch here. We've got a 30 degree bevel. Now, I noticed that one side's just straight. That's a square joint. You've got a single bevel fit up right here. Uh, you know, what does that give you as far? And you've got all these numbers on here. What does all that mean? Like, why, why are you all not worrying about prepping one side? Are you worried about lack of fusion or anything? No, nothing like that. So this is actually going to qualify you to the fillet and it's also going to qualify you to the groove oh, weld. So okay, this okay. is called a GF plate groove fillet. So you're going to come and put your first weld up on that square side and that's going to qualify you to a fillet weld. And then once you get filling and you're going to cap this, that'll give you the groove portion of it. So we're kind of uh, banging two birds with one stone here. Yeah. So on the plates that I've always welded for a weld test, we don't have all these numbers. What do those mean? So these numbers here, this is telling us the position, that big three that we're seeing right here. If we come from the center out right now, we've got a number here and that's usually going to identify the welder. And then we've also got a CWB stamp that comes in and that's just telling everybody that that's a CWB stamp plate that you can't take from, from off the shelf or you can't replace it with anything else. Lastly, we've got our coupons and we've got one, two, and three. These two are going to be a root bend because we've got a stop and a restart here at about an inch and a half up and four and a half from, from the top down. So we've got a face bend and we've got two root bends. So y'all do three bend tests for your, for your pro, uh, procedures. Yeah, we've got three. We, we usually lose about a half inch to a co uh, three quarters of an inch on each end. And then everything else in the middle gets, uh, gets bent up into three coupons. You guys are serious up, up there, huh? So let me walk you through what I got over here for the AWS standard. All right, Austin, I'm looking at something similar, but still kind of different. Uh, I'm not too familiar with this plate here. Can you tell me a little bit about the groove, you know, the prep, the backing bar? Oh, the prep is the same, right? Just keep it clean. Got to keep everything clean, right? We don't want to be running over any trash. Uh, but it's very similar to what the CWB standard may be. However, we do typically run these one inch backing bars, quarter inch thick, but this is a three eighths plate test just as we're doing over there. But instead of the single bevel design, we actually do a single V groove. Single so that v. means we've got a bevel on each side of these plates and we have a, a little bit less of a root opening. And that's probably having to do with the fact that we're not trying to go for a fillet weld as well. We're just trying to tie all three of these numbers together. You know, the hold points and everything are a little bit different uh, comparatively speaking to the CWB and AWS. So really we just put a, we get it all fit up. We get everything even and uh, our, our bevels straight and it's just, we just send it bud. So you're telling me you're not stopping. You're not, there's no indications like that to, to stop or to restart or. Right. No, we're going to, we're, the hold points are going to be the fit up and then the root pass. And then after that, it's between the welder and Jesus until the cap. And so, no stamps, no stamps, no stamps. Right. And we, we do have a standard about where we mark our straps and that'll be later on when we get to the point of actually doing our bend test, we'll lay out the coupon appropriately. Uh, but we only have one root and one face bend. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't we uh, why don't we take this point right now and, and weld these up? Yeah, let's burn something. All right, Guy. So we're going to play pretend here that you're my inspector. I'm a welder taking a test in Canada and we're going to go over a hold points. And if you guys don't know, a hold point is when the inspector is going to stop you at a certain point in your weld test to check your progression. So what is the first hold point uh, for us in the CWB standard here? OK, so Austin was given a plate. The inspector stamps up the plate 
gives the stop and restart. Austin takes the plate to his area that he's welding in. He tacks this thing up in that vertical position, in that axis. This has to stay in that position throughout the whole weld. Whenever he's done his first stop, he's going to go and get the inspector. The inspector is going to come back to him and give him the yay or nay on this. So I've got to put my first pass. We're going to be running flux core today. I'm going to have to put my first pass up this fillet weld sided, and I put this put this little stick rod here to so that I could see under the hood when I get to that point. I have to stop. I have to stop there. That's right. You got to stop there. So this here is if we're measuring from the bottom, we're about four and a half inches up and he's got to see that. So we've got this little rod right here. Now it's really important that we keep that first fillet weld within five sixteenths of an inch. No bigger. We can go to about quarter inch, but five sixteenths right up to there. We don't want to be too large because so I got, got a put... freaking laser beam one up in here. Huh? Yeah, you just got to keep going. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, let's do, let's do it. Let's burn All right. some. All right. Let's do it. Let me just grind this down before you get Whoa, a look at it. Take it easy, eh? No grinders allowed, Austin. We're allowed a wire wheel. We can use our chipping hammer. We can use our wire brush. No metal removing tools. So you're allowed a you're allowed a chisel, things like that. No files. Anything that's going to remove metal. That's All right, fair. let's that's let's fair. have a look at his stop here. All right, you're looking pretty good. I kind of passed her up just a hair, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, but I think we're still within within area now. Let's clean that up. Chip it off and wire brush it. And so we'll clean this up and then I'll get to the second hold point, which will be down here, right? I'll make this tie in and then I'll come up to here. Then we're going to go to our second hold point. Exactly. Yeah. We're going to move this little indicator. We're going to put it right at the bottom. And Austin, I'm going to suggest you do a little weave to wash in and kind of marry that bevel side, the backing so bar one. and the square side one. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, Austin, you got your tie in here at the top. You did your second pass up here. You've married that backing bar, that bevel and the square side. Now it's time to tie in and you just fill right to what the end. What do you end. think there, Inspector? You like how the old American sling wire? Too bad. Not, Not too, too bad. bad. Well, let's get after it. All right. I feel so like I'm being babysitted this whole time. Y'all really like to bird babysat, dog a dude. Babysat. Once you're done this, once you're done this, show me your cap. I don't want to see anything else. I don't have to. Yeah, as I put this root in, I like to just kind of oscillate, making sure, like Guy said, to tie into all three pieces of plate. So I like to do this real quick side to side to help ensure that I'm doing that. You want to make sure your gun angle is maintained all the way up. You don't start leaning back that torch too much. You need to be keeping that same gun angle from bottom to top. Typically, you'll want to leave your hands behind and you'll lean that gun back. So make sure your hands keep up with your travel speed. All right, Guy, so let me tell you how we do it here in the States. Now, right. as an inspector, we have the same hold points as you do in Canada. You're going to put that coupon in place. You're going to get it fit up, put it in place, and then I'm going to come by and check, make sure the fit up's okay. And then I'm going to make sure that this plate doesn't move from where you decided to set it. So that was all the same. The only thing that we're going to do a little different is we're just going to put a root in it from no, bottom to no, top. None of this. You don't need, don't need that. Don't need the stick. We're just going to go from straight bottom all the way to top. Then you can holler at me. I'll come look at it. I'll pick you apart. You know, make sure you got it done right. And then we'll just move on from there. Hey man, I like them Cayman gloves. It really matches your Canadian tuxedo pretty good. All right, we'll get after it, man. All right, I'm watching the toes the whole way. Keeping that stick out nice and consistent. Staying at the leading edge of that puddle. Making sure I'm marrying the backing bar and those two bevels.
All right, so you put that bead in there pretty slick. That looks good, man. You know, we've got some of the similar rules here in uh, America as far as the D11 standard. We're not going to take a grinder any of this either. We want to make sure that your skill is on point where you don't need that grinder. You're a welder, not a grinder, right? So we're going to keep it that way. Chip and hammer, brush, wire wheel, all that good stuff is something that you can use. So now that we both got our hold points done, our roots are in, all, the, all that good stuff is all set up. Now... Both standards are the next hold point is on the cap, right? That's right. So we just got to finish filling up these grooves and uh, get a cap on her and then we'll be right back. So let's, let's, let's burn some wire, bro. All right, I'm going straight up with this pass. We're doing stringer beads now. And I'm moving fairly quick. I'm not really doing much side to side motion. All right, go ahead and put a lid on this sucker. Go for a three bead cap. I still like to carry this oscillation. It's just my favorite thing to do. Side to side, side to side. It's still going slow. Lots of movement, but slow travel speed. Believe it or not, on this last bead, I actually like to point inside the bevel. Maintaining that puddle on the inside and just watching it creep to the outside of that bevel edge. Uh, you know, a lot of people think that they should point to the left. Yeah, that's fine too. I actually like to point to the right to kind of help lay this and build this crown of this cap appropriately. Trying to be really smooth. Always want to be smooth for that last bead. Keep it clean and keep it hot. Nothing can live in hell. Well, all right, Guy, we've got these things capped down. If you guys notice, we've got a bunch of marks on here. Mine looks like a doctor wrote it or maybe a toddler. I didn't do too great at laying out the straps, but these are different. Uh, the Canadian standard is a lot different than the American Welding Society standard as far as the bin straps. So walk me through uh, how you laid out your plate here for my weld test, Guy. Okay, so generally a plate would be six inches wide or six inches long, however you want to put it. And we would be left with about three quarters of an inch on each side after we We've laid out our straps or our, our coupons. Now over here, we've got about, about an inch left. Yeah, over. These were what, seven inches? Yeah, the plate was about seven inches long. Mm -hmm. So we got a little bit more on here. So, but we still have our coupon one or our strap, which is a root bend. We've got our two, which is a face bend. And then we've got our three, which is uh, another root bend. And then these just get discarded. We don't need them at all. They're not part of so the So you test. got three straps to pass this we test right here. We got three. And of course, after we move, remove the backing bar. So exactly. let me show you what we've got over here. It's a little bit different, right? We've got a little less work, if you ask me. I've just got two straps. We mark from the center. Uh, then we mark an inch out from the center each direction. And then we mark each strap as an inch and a half wide. And same with these, right? These are all an inch and a half, no? They're all an inch and a half. So yep. they're all an inch and a half wide strap so that you can see that there are some similarities. And as far as the bend test goes, right, if we actually do bend it, we have the same issues as far as defects, what is rejectable and what's not. Eighth of an inch indication is going to be a failure if it's over an eighth. If there's some smaller indications, if they add up to what, five thirty seconds? Uh, we're at three eighths. Or three eighths of an inch. And then corner cracks and all that good stuff. Exactly. Those are all the same, right? One eighth of an inch in any direction. If there's a tear from the edge, you're allowed up to a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, it's, it's a pass. Uh, so from what I'm seeing, the two differences, this seems a little stricter, a little bit more tighter tolerance than, say, this standard here. Now, what does this get you in Canada? Like, how, what, what, how do you get to this point? So you're, you're qualifying to W471, which is... Um, allows you to, to, to weld on buildings and bridges or really anything structural within a CWB shop, certified shop that is. So if you go out here, you would have to start, I think we mentioned this earlier that I would have to start at the flat. I'd have to go to the horizontal and then have to go to be. So you couldn't just take this. this test. You'd have to go from step one, two, and then to three. Exactly. At this point, as far as weld position. I think on yours, we can just go right to this, right? right. If the weld test it says it's a 3G weld and uh, the welder, you know, just wants to do a 3G weld, we just run in there and do a 3G weld. So what does this give you? Like if you do get to this point, what are you certified or what are you qualified in as far as positions and, and thickness and stuff? So if you look at your qualification card, it'll tell you exactly what you're qualified to weld and what position and what class, what joint configuration. And this plate here will give you anything which is three millimeters and up. It's about an is, eighth of an inch, yeah? Exactly. It's about an eighth of an inch. And what's what's going on over here? So what you're telling me that this is an eighth of an inch to unlimited thickness on this three-eighths plate. 
That's what the card says. Yeah. What about fillet welds? Are you certified to weld fillet welds? Same. Same. So because we did the 3GF, you're certified to do at least a, a vertical, a 3F. A 3F weld. vertical, three millimeters and up. But not a 4F. But not a 4F. That's a separate test. We gotta, we gotta do that somewhere else. You gotta, you gotta take that on a, another occasion or if you're doing it on the same day. We do have something called an all position, which, you know, that's your all four plates and that gives you, that's, that's your, you're qualified in all positions for that. Gotcha. Yeah. So what's a little bit different is taking a test with the AWS standards as far as D11 goes. If you take on it on three eighths plate, you're qualified to weld double that thickness. So now you're good to weld up to three quarters of an inch and down to an eighth. And you're good from 3G position uh, all the way down to one. You're not qualified te technically for 4G. However, you are qualified to weld one, two, three, and four F. So you are good to weld all fillet welds and, and 24 inch pipe or bigger, as long as it's got a backing strap, you're even, still- Even pipe. Even pipe for this test. So for these two straps, you get all position fillet welds, you get 3G, 2G, 1G, and you get some pipe if it's 24 inches and bigger. Talk about bang for your buck. Bang right? for your buck right there. That's what I'm talking about. So it's really cool to, to see the differences between the two, Guy. I really appreciate the time and you coming Absolutely. in all the way from the Great White North to come play with, uh, play with some metal with us. Y'all take it easy. We'll see you on the next one. Be sure to go download the Weld app today to see a bunch of quality good content and meet a lot of great people. Y'all be good.